would you pay 250 bucks for two McFarlane figures, a diorama, and some knickknacks? Because let's face it, that's kind of what they were. They were knickknacks. So, in one of the uh, most riveting uh, reactions that a lot of us kind of got in, in recent time as McFarlane collectors, as followers of the brand, etc., etc., McFarlane officially revealed the 2019 Joaquin Phoenix Joker set that he has been teasing since Comic-Con, which I bared witness firsthand that when he made that announcement. I was in the audience, actually, when he was doing that panel. And then kind of gave us a little bit of an update at New York Comic Con. And now finally in fully realized 3D printed plastic form, we get our preview, our look at the set itself. Everything that's included. The collectible lenticular looking box with like the reflective design on the front. The pre-order launch date. And then the price tag. $250. And almost everybody anonymously hated the price tag. How much did they hate the price tag? How much did they think that this thing was just way overpriced? It is still in fact available for pre-order. Not just at the McFarland Toy Store site. But also practically everywhere, again, except strangely, Entertainment Earth. And my personal belief, my personal tinfoil hat theory is that maybe out of all these retailers, Entertainment Earth is the one that just couldn't, because of the price point, couldn't pri couldn't buy too many units, and so they probably got. Uh, if I was to be a little generous, probably somewhere between 100 to 150. And enough people managed to pre-order, knowing what I know, which is that Entertainment Earth technically doesn't charge until it ships, which won't be until March. People probably put down the pre-order. Maybe some uh, retailers, like Mike's Toys and stuff, which I like to buy from here in the, in the Southern California area, put down their pre-orders within a matter of minutes, and Entertainment Earth is the only one that managed to achieve selling, selling out status. But Amazon, McFarland Toy Store... Uh, Big Red Toy Store, uh, GameStop, I believe practically everywhere it is still available. And that's because people are simply just not biting this set, which includes two of the figures. Let me switch back to the product page here. Includes two of the figures, which of course is going to be the Joker figure, the Murray Franklin, Robert De Niro figure. They're included uh, accessories. The mug, the microphone, four additional hands for Joker, his journal, the handgun, which is pretty surprising considering the whole weapons thing, the different face plates to swap them out for the different expressions, one of which has the blood on his face, and then this collectible card with a shot from the movie. Now that's what's concerning the figures. In the background, we're going to have the live with Murray Franklin set. Which has like the glossy finish, which if I look a little carefully, it actually looks like it's made out of cardboard. Because you can kind of see the trimming right there and it looks like cardboard. So it's not even fully plastic. I didn't know that prior to even filming this. But I would assume safely that the rest is made out of plastic except for maybe the back. Okay, see this I'll give it. the the, the If it's being used for... This little thing here in the background to make up the cityscape. Okay, fine. If that's cardboard, it's affixed to the windows, which are plastic. All right. I, I feel like the floor should have been plastic, but that's neither here nor there. You have then the desk, the two chairs, and even the plant, which are separated pieces that you can kind of move about. And there you have kind of like a little bit of a breakdown of how everything's going to be held together inside of the set. But then you have what is arguably the thing that I think to me bloats this set up to $250. And on paper, it seems like a very pointless thing to do. But 
at the same time, there's a little bit of an explanation. So we broke down the set. We broke down the figures uh, that are included. You also get pretty much paraphernalia <laughs> from the movie. Also, as it says in the description, also includes life-size prop replica items. A full-sized Arthur Fleck... <laughs> Dr. Kane. Um, full-size Arthur Fleck Joker notebook. A don't forget to smile sign, which apparently is going to be made out of metal. An open mic night poster made out of paper, which is the Pogo's Comedy Club open mic night set Thursdays at 7 p.m. Yada yada yada. And then a cardstock of Forgive My Laughter cardstock, which is basically that little card where he gives to people when he's laughing and he can't control himself. He's like, hey, I have a condition. This is what this is. The, these are probably the items that are placed inside of the set to beef it up to the $250. Because let's break down exactly what everything kind of accounts for, right? Like, let's try to break down, you know, what on average everything kind of goes down for here. I'm going to be generous and say that each of these figures, both the Joker figure and even the Murray Franklin, I keep wanting to say Franklin Murray, Murray Franklin figures, would be about $30 each. Because $30 is how much a collector's edition figure is. And I personally feel like each of these figures at best, at best, are collector's edition figures. Because of the amount of accessories they come with. I'm going to say, alright, let's say that each of these guys are collector's edition figures. They usually retail for 30 bucks each. So let's say that this right here that you see in this image is 60 bucks. So there's 60. Now we have to account $190. Let's go over to the set. Um we'll get the the, the Murray Franklin set, the 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 diorama. It's made out of cardboard and plastic. It's uh, arguably probably going to be a little hollowed out. What do you guys think that this goes for? I want to give it around 50 bucks. So let's say that the two figures with their accessories combined is 60. This set is 50 with the plastic and even, like I said, maybe if the floor was a little tougher and weightier with plastic filled in like resin, okay. But no, you can see right there, it's blatantly cardboard. It's cardboard. Come on, guys. Come on. And then the rest is going to be plastic. And then, the, like I said, the window panes with the background there, that's probably going to be cardboard as well. I'm going to say this is all at least 50 bucks. And again, that's me being a little bit on the generous side. So 60 plus 50, that's $110. If you want to throw in just a little bit of slack, 120 which is the price that I saw a lot of people in the comment section for my video that I posted last week say is probably the most they would have paid for this set, 120 And I got to be honest, I would have felt comfortable with that. I, it, it wouldn't be the best, most like bang for your buck price. Still would have stung a little bit, but I would have understood it. So you mean to tell me that these knickknacks and maybe the box that they're in is $130? This box, which admittedly has a cool design, but we've seen designs in, in boxes like this before when they would do like those five packs of the Builder figures. What are we talking about? Seriously. What are we talking about? It's actually one of the reasons for why I stopped collecting so many um, collector's editions for video games because sometimes they would throw things in that eventually I kind of grew a little older and looked at it and went, 
I don't have a desk to put these things on. Why am I collecting this? And I somewhat kind of stopped. I severely slowed down on getting the collector's edition of certain video games. And I'm just like, just give me the basic version. Physical? I'm still a physical disc guy. But just give me the standard 60, 70 buck version. Because eventually I'm like, I'm doing the math in my head. And I'm like, you mean to tell me that this little like carved little doll and this scroll that looks kind of cool but then you're gonna put it away and back in the box is worth that extra 100 and something and some change now since people have theorized immediately and that's this is the vibe that i got as well that this price is not so much accounting for what's included in the box and included in the set but i think mcfarlane bit off more than he can chew when he bought this license especially after the dismal return or diminished return of the sequel because for those of you who have been living under a rock we got a sequel to joker fully i do and it was no kept secret that the movie tanked commercially and critically and I feel like McFarlane was sitting on this giant license that he paid up the ass for. But when the sequel didn't move, people were like, we don't want anything to do with this guy. This this specific version of Joker, especially after the way he's kind of treated in that movie. It's like, yeah, no. Even if this box set is based on one of the pivotal scenes from the first movie, there's enough of a trickle-down effect there that is gonna affect sales now did McFarlane themselves clarify this or explain this in any kind of format you tell me because they did in fact put out a statement on their social media platforms from Instagram to Twitter Facebook etc let me switch on over to the Twitter statement which they did in the form of a quote t tweet teet, tweet to the earlier announcement of the pre-orders going live. We've heard your feedback. <laughs> Sorry. It's funny how they call it feedback. We've heard your feedback about the pricing of the Joker movie set and wanted to take a moment to address your concerns. Due to the mature wait, is my camera fine? Okay, yeah, there you go. Due to the mature nature of the Joker movie, we faced unique restrictions on pricing options, which made this approach the only way we could release the product. Despite these limitations, we remain committed to delivering a very limited offering that truly feels worth it. That's why we packed that's why we packed as much value into the box as possible with exclusive details and features we hope you'll enjoy. You're, you're, you're going to keep hoping, all right? Your feedback means everything to us and we'll always strive to provide the best value while honoring the characters and stories you love. Thank you for your passion and input. It's what inspires us to keep improving. Translation, we were forced this price by WB. Because that's how much the licensing cost. And we needed to keep it at a certain point. And then, and who knows? Here's the thing is that you could kind of paint it in, in two different directions. Where McFarlane bought this license for a huge sum, sum. And when he saw that the second Joker movie bombed. And he is not getting that big of a return investment. He's like, well, that thing's got to be 250 After they put out the statement... It actually kind of clicked something in my mind that I completely forgot about and re-remembered. That's even a term. And that is true. Warner Brothers does have a bit of an iron grip on this specific interpretation of the Joker as far as licensing for collectibles and action figures and such like that. Now, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that that completely takes McFarlane off the hook. They still took the deal. They still said, yes, we're going to sign on the dotted line to make this 250 You still did that, McFarlane. Nobody forced you to do that. 
you always say it yourself. You don't need money. But you signed on to do this. You could have just left it alone. I'm sorry. You could have left well enough alone. Just like they could have left the first movie be one movie, but no, Warner Brothers needed to make a sequel. And here's what I re-remembered. Is that they're not the only ones that had to kind of make a statement similar to this. If any of you are familiar, you know, some of you in the comments who are mentioning Hot Toys. For those of you who are acquainted with Hot Toys, you should also be acquainted with their current somewhat competitor, InArt. And InArt is also going to be making a 1-6 scale Joker figure from the 2019 Joaquin Phoenix movie. With the rooted hair, the likeness to Joaquin Phoenix, the face, all that stuff. However, there's a catch. Similar, similar, kind of similar to that of the McFarlane site. There's no such thing as a singular release for this Joker figure. When it comes to InArt. They are not doing any kind of single, re a single release. You're either doing a two-pack with a partial bit of the set from the Murray Franklin show and the accessories. Or you're doing a four-pack that I believe goes for like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars And then the double-pack is about eight or nine hundred, something like that. Why? Because according to a representative at InArt, they legit said that WB says that we need to have it at a certain price point and can't go below that. And in order to satisfy that price point, we have to do two packs or four packs. We can't do a singular, singular one-figure release. So you can't get Arthur Fleck by himself. You can't get uh, Red Suit Joker by himself. It either, you either get these two or you get the four-pack that comes with these two additional uh, versions of the suit. Where you have... Arguably the one that I think everybody looks at and goes, eh, the, why is that here? Is him from the hospital scene where he drops the gun. And then they threw in, like I said, a few more accessories like the Everything Must Go sign, the suitcase, etc. So I'm not letting McFarlane off the hook, but at the same time, there is a little bit of a, a logic, an explanation. A history. It, it really is a mess. It, it, it makes you think of what it would have been like in like an alternate timeline of getting just a standalone Joaquin Phoenix Joker just by itself. And that's not to say that the... Po well, here's the thing, is that I really desperately would like to not rule out the possibility of a platinum release later where he's got like the, the bathroom look. Um sold by itself but considering that like i said that state that new statement they put out and making me remember what inart said about them having to do those sets in order to hit that price point uh instilled by wb for this specific license this specific property kind of makes me throw away the hopes to be honest that we're gonna get a platinum re standalone release i don't think we're ever gonna get that I really don't. And for now, I think this is really going to be it. Um, what kind of strategies Warner Brothers and McFarlane can maybe work out later? Should there be enough product sitting? That we can kind of theorize. But my theory is that it's, like I said, I'm not fully condemning McFarlane, but also not fully condoning either. You know, I'm pulling a Dr. Manhattan here. <laughs> I guess at this point, it's just a matter of waiting for other companies like maybe Mafex to see what they do, considering the licensing limitations, if they even want to touch that. Or frankly, just, you know, go online to see if people are selling customs. <laughs> if you truly want a figure in the scale, but you don't want to pay... A 250 for a bunch of bonus stuff that you're probably not going to pull out of the box anyway. Look into someone who has a 3D printer. Because <laughs> that's probably going to be your best answer right now. But only time will tell. Ooh, Rishev, you bring up an interesting point. Chat, what do you guys think? 250 but you get four figures. So standard Joker, the Murray Franklin, but then like he said, the other two looks. The doctor and the bathroom look. And maybe the 
uh, Arthur Fleck, regular, no makeup, no costume. Five figures, like a build a figure, and then the set, no knickknacks. Honestly, that would have been a. I, I probably would have done. I probably would have done it. 